In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a base map in Gridpoint Atlas, how to overlay the world grid in Gridpoint Atlas, and then view that overlay in Google Earth. So we start by going to Google Earth, and we want to choose an area that we want to work with. We don't want to plot the world grid over the entire world because there would be trillions and trillions of points and the file would be enormous and it would just slow the computer down. So what we're going to do is select an area that we want to work with. So let's say that I'm a researcher who is researching Egyptian sites, ancient sites, and I want to plot the grid and see how these sites are related to it, if they are. If they are, then it may mean that the people who built the sites, the monuments or the buildings, knew about the grid system and wanted to use it to their advantage. So we're going to choose Luxor Temple in Egypt. That's the site that I want to see if the world grid is related to. So let's first go to Luxor Temple. I have it bookmarked. We're going to zoom in on the area. So here's Luxor, Egypt, and we're right over the Luxor Temple here. And the first thing we want to do is write down the center of the view that we want to look at. And so the rough coordinate is 25.700003 degrees north latitude, 32.639390 degrees east longitude. So let's minimize this. We're going to run the Gridpoint Atlas software. Now the first thing you do is you want to create a map to plot the grid on. We only need to use one map layer, so this is just going to be a base map. So we go up here to the Theme Selection button on the toolbar, and we want to select the Southern Asia Australia map. That's the part of the world that Egypt is in. We only want to select the political boundary areas theme or layer. So we're going to add that. We're going to update our map. And here we are. Now I want to come up here and draw a marker at a coordinate. And the coordinate I'm going to use is the uh, coordinate that I discovered for the Luxor Temple, and it's 25.700003 degrees north latitude and 32.639390 degrees east longitude. The marker is going to be red, it's going to be a square marker, and the size of it is going to be 8. So I'll say OK. So here is where our area is, so we want to we place the marker so we can easily find the area. So now we're going to zoom in to that area. And the marker is roughly in the center of the view, but we're going to click the center map at mouse click function. So I'll click it in the coordinate. Now the map is centered here. And then I'm going to go up to the overlay world grid button on the toolbar and we want the map to be centered at 25.700003 degrees north latitude 32.639390 degrees east longitude the grid color is going to be ultraviolet blue the line weight is going to be three we could select a different one if we wanted and the resolution is going to be seven and a half minutes or seven and a half nautical miles. And what this means is that we're going to plot a grid where the grid lines are seven and a half nautical miles apart. This is the main uh, grid that Bruce Cathy discovered and he talks about in his books. He also discovered the 30 nautical mile grid, which is actually the first one he discovered. And then he found he could 
break it down into seven and a half nautical miles. So the grid lines will be spaced seven and a half nautical miles apart. And the grid is actually infinite. But we're interested in how the Luxor Temple relates to the seven and a half nautical mile grid. So we're going to say OK to plot the grid. And it's plotted the grid over our area. Now we want to go up here to the toolbar and view overlay in Google Earth. We haven't saved the map first, so we need to do that. And I've already saved Luxor Temple before, so we're going to use the same information. The file name is Luxor Temple, map title Luxor Temple Egypt, and the description is the same. So we'll say Save As. We'll override it. Now it brings the Google Earth file uh, over to Google Earth and displays it. When you overlay a world grid in the Grid Point Atlas software, I write the output files in two different formats. One is shape file format. So if you use ESRI software, you could load the shape file uh, files that I output and load them in your own software. However, we're working with Google Earth, and the GridPoint Atlas software also outputs a KML file, which is a Google Earth compatible file. So after we plot the grid in the GridPoint Atlas software, we send it over here, it plots it in Google Earth, and here we are. Now, if we zoom in on the view, we see that, in fact, a major grid line goes right through the middle of the Luxor Temple complex. So the people who originally built this temple obviously knew something. But you notice the view, when it sent the file over here from GridPoint Atlas, the view was a lot higher. This is because in GridPoint Atlas, we just, I don't know the altitude above the earth that you're going to want to be viewing from. So I just choose the default value of 5,000 meters. So we can edit that. Let's go back over to Gridpoint Atlas. And we're going to edit this overlay that we've been working with. So I'll edit Google Earth file. I'll select the overlay we want. I'll click the Edit button. We only want to change the eye altitude. Instead of 5,000 meters above, we're going to choose 500 meters. The tilt is zero degrees. That means our viewpoint is looking straight down at the Earth. And the heading is zero degrees, which means that we're, the map is oriented in a, in a northerly direction. We want to keep the same grid color and line and, of course, the coordinate we want to center on. So we'll save the changes, say close. We'll send it back to Google Earth. And since we already have the file loaded in to Google Earth, we want to reload it. So now, when we send the file here, it's going to be at roughly the 500 meters distance. And here we are. And that is how we create a base map in GridPoint Atlas, how we overlay the world grid in GridPoint Atlas, and then we view that overlay in Google Earth.